Hello, I've made a suppression script, and the idea is it gives you a bit more atmosphere in your missions. I'll just hit preview and show you what it does first. So, if I run forward, and go into the first trigger area, we'll see these guys on top of the hill start shooting. Now what they're doing is they're randomly selecting from a couple of markers I've placed in the in this trigger area and they're shooting at them. The fire will kill you, but it's so inaccurate that it's unlikely to. It's more just for atmosphere, like I said. There is a download link in the description of this video if you want to download this demo. But what I'll do is to speed up time and run forward. And we'll be approaching another trigger area in a minute. And as we can see, walked into that and immediately they started shooting in here as well. And we can keep going further and further up the valley and the fire would keep following us as we go. So the idea is it just adds a bit of atmosphere to the mission without uh, actually <laughs> killing everybody. Because the engagement range for AI is pretty low. I'm using fixed emplacements as you can see up there. You can use infantry if you want to for this. So I'm just going to exit out and I'll show you how to implement this in your own mission. So uh, the first thing we need to do to use this is we need to place a gun or a unit down on the map and we're just going to give it a unique name. So I've called this one Gun 2, I've called this one over here Gun 1. The next thing you need is a trigger, and the trigger is going to be when the script starts. And as you can see in here, we've got null, and then we've got an array, execute random fire .sqf. Um So, the first part of the array is the name of the gun you want to activate. You can only put one of the guns in at once. And the next six parts are the marker areas uh, that you want to be the locations the fire goes on to. And then the very last number, that's not in quotations, is 60, and that's how many times you want the guns to fire, or the units to fire, at that location. So, as you can see in my trigger area here, I've got all the markers named, and they're just randomly scattered around. What the script does is it picks one, and it shoots at it. And it's going to do that 60 times. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see I've done the same thing again for gun 2. And as we go up the valley, the marker names are different. And we've just changed it so it has a 2 at the end to match the name of the markers. That's it, really. Uh, the last thing you need to do is download the script from the video description below and you need to put that into your mission folder. And I'll quickly show you how to put it in your mission folder if you want to. And I'll quickly show you how to edit the script if you need to edit it. So I'm just going to tab out to my desktop. So uh, we've downloaded the file and you'll get a raw file like this. Um, all you need to do is extract the folder. And I'm going to extract that to desktop. And you'll see you get your folder here. Now the next thing you need to do is find your mission. Which will be under documents. It'll be under either one of these two, armor free or armor free other profiles. Depending on what uh, player profile you're using. The next thing you do is go into your uh, name, you go into your missions folder and you'll see here a list of all your missions. Now you can drag this folder directly into this mission folder and that'll mean you can now open the demo. Or the other thing you can do is just simply drag the SQF into one of your uh, missions folders. And the last thing we're going to look at if you want to is just editing the script itself. So I'm going to open the randomfire.sqf and if I go up to the top here, 
Uh, we've got two comments, and the second comment you'll recognize as what we've used in the demo, and that's executing the script. So comments are just uh, bits of the script that are ignored, indicated by forward slashes. So uh, we've got these different bits of the array here that are passed to the script, which means they're just transferred to the script when the script runs. And the way the script knows what they are is, let's take gun1 for example, this is the first part of the array, and if we go down to here, gun name equals this select 0, so that's going to select the first part of the array, and gun1 now in the script becomes gun name. The second part of our array is t1, and that is select 1, so marker 1 equals this select 1. Uh, so that's selecting the second part of the array there. And it goes on and on and on. And the last thing we have is 4 time equals this select 7. And that's the 8th part, eighth part of our array. Uh, so that's 60 seconds is now 4 time. So 4 time equals 60 in this instance of the array. And that's how we pass things from our trigger to our script. One thing I've done here is put private and then I've listed all the variables and private is just a command that says all these things are private to this script and that means you can have the same script uh, which is randomfire.sqf run as many times as you want and there won't be any conflicts because they're imagine if they were using the same name and it wasn't private all these values would be global and they'd be able to be known about in different parts of the script and that could cause some conflicts. So private's just saying this is happening within this script only. And I've also made sure that only the server's running this script. So if on line four here, if you're not the server, exit. We'll move down a little bit to the main part of the script. And there's two things here you probably want to know about. And that is 4 time equals this select 7. So we've already said that equals 60 in this example. And while 4 time is greater than 0, do this. So it's going to make the things fire while it's greater than 0. What we have down here on line 22 is 4 time equals 4 time uh, minus 1. So 60 equals 60 minus 1. Uh, now 4 time equals 59, so then when the scripts run again, it's uh, 4 time equals 59 minus 1, that's 58 now. So the number gets lower and lower every time this script is run, until eventually it becomes um, 1 and the script stops, and that's when it ends. The very last thing that's uh, important is change target so I've put change target here equals floor random six so what we've got here is the name of a value equals floor and floor uh, you've got three options here you've got a ceiling round and floor floor means lower numbers are likely to be picked Ceiling means higher numbers are likely to be picked, and round, I believe, means um, every number is equally as likely to be picked. So I've just gone for the lower numbers to make it a bit more random. Random 6. Uh, so it will pick a random number between 0 and 6. Uh, 0 and 5 even, sorry, because there's 6 numbers to select from. And that's then used on this line here, which is switch, line 19. And it says switch, change, target, do. So switch is just a command that takes the value, so a number between 0 and 5. And it does one of these cases dependent on that number. So if the number was 0, for example, that the random uh, came up with, the case 0 would be done. And that just simply makes the gunner look at marker 1. And then it makes the gunner fire. So case 2 
here, for example, makes the unit look at mark three, and then he fires the weapon. So that's just the way of making a bit of randomization within the script. Okay, hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, hopefully that script's useful to you, and that's how you can edit it if you want to. And that's it. If you want to see some more editing videos, check out this channel. I've got a few more videos on the subject of editing in Armour. Uh, and I've got a few more scripts to download as well. So, until next time, thanks for watching. Goodbye.